All right. Um, let's see. Right. Yesterday, Sunday the 5th, my wife and I went to the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra for the concert. And we have a subscription to the season this year, and I have promised to give a brief uh, recapitulation after each. So this is the second concert that I've been to this season. Um, don't think of this as a review. I don't think of it as a review. There's good reviews in the in the Post Gazette. Um, these are uh, opinions and 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 reactions. Hopefully entertaining, perhaps informative. Um, probably not uh, useful in terms of deciding whether or not to attend the Pittsburgh Symphony. Probably useful to decide whether you want to sit next to me. So the program, Mozart, Jupiter Symphony, Tchaikovsky, Violin Concerto, and Ravel La Valse. And a totally engaging concert. I had a wonderful time. The soloist for Tchaikovsky was Bomsori, and she was really fantastic. Like, it was a performance that was filled with character. You know, um, performance of that piece can, or of any big piece, can sometimes be a bit smoothed out. You know, she had a bit of raucous quality, and you know, in a in a really great way um, throughout throughout the piece. I loved it. There was a great rapport between her and the conductor, who uh, James Gaffigan was a guest conductor. Um, for the for the show, they had a wonderful a wonderful rapport with each other. That really was a was a joy to watch. Was it a joy to hear Tchaikovsky? Look, I don't know. I like that piece, but we all know that piece, right? Even if you don't think you know it, you'll know it when you hear it. Do you really need to hear it? Did I really need to go on a Sunday afternoon and see the Pittsburgh Symphony saw a way through it? I just don't know. It made me think. I, so I walked away telling Catherine, you know, there's probably a thousand performances of that piece every year. All right, so that's a bit, that's a bit of an inflammatory statement because a thousand performances would be, what, five a week? Something like that. No, five or ten, twenty a week. Five a day. That seems like a lot. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I Googled around a bit, and I came across the um, League of American Orchestras. Uh, they do have repertoire reports. Go figure. Uh, they poll what looks to be about 150 symphony orchestras. Um, the Pittsburgh Symphony is there. Other Pennsylvania orchestras include the York Symphony, the Reading Symphony, the Philadelphia Symphony, and then Harrisburg, Erie, and Allentown. So not limited to just like the top 10, the top tier. A pretty good uh, a pretty good blend of, of, of regions. I mean, every state is represented. Um, so maybe a couple hundred, two, three hundred orchestras. And uh, the repertoire report for last season, 21 to 22, is uh, very focused as, uh, focused on diversity and representation. So most of the analytics are uh, around um, uh, those, those, those metrics. The... The information I was looking for, where they actually break it down by piece, the most recent of those I could find is from 10 years ago, 2012 to 13. Uh, and in that season, the Tchaikovsky Concerto in D major for violin and orchestra, Opus 35, was played four times, three times. 
sorry. Uh, Twice of Them by Joshua Bell with the New York Philharmonic and with the Atlanta Symphony and then one by Vadim Glusman by the Pacific Symphony. So not a thousand, three. There we go. This is what I was looking for. Let's see whether I cut that out or not. That was a bit of a bit of a pause. All right. On this slide here, you can see the Beethoven had over forty different titles programmed three hundred times in the season. That's a lot, right? That's a lot. And then Mozart, Tchaikovsky down here. Mozart, more titles but fewer performances, but still over two hundred performances. Tchaikovsky. 30 titles, about 175 performances. So a lot of Tchaikovsky. And then everybody else down here in the lower left quadrant is like, here's a performance, here's your one piece, now get out of here. It's an interesting report. Um, I don't know what I would do if I if I was in, in charge, if I was a decision maker for a symphony orchestra. I would be highly conflicted because on the one hand, I the symphony is not relevant, is it really? I mean, it's an institution. It's it's a museum piece. Now, I love it. I'm glad I can go to the symphony. But um, the symphony orchestra as a me as a means of modern expression, I I just don't see it. And I would love to be able to write for the orchestra. I mean that both ways. Be able to, meaning technically. Like, I'm a, I'm a terrible orchestrator. I've never done it, right? I've done it a couple of times when I was a student. I, could, I had an opportunity to write, but I just don't think like that. Um, so whether I'm technically able or financially able in terms of the investment, like, how much money did it cost to have this fantastic soloist, Bumsori, come to Pittsburgh, practice, rehearse, play with all those orchestra members. A lot of money. Um, you know, what if you were to split that up and give it to 10 composers to write for solo instruments, or smaller ensembles, or just write whatever? You could probably do a lot. Is that the right thing to do? I don't know. Write them. Those 10 composers would probably over the course, if you gave 10 composers enough to do that for 10 years, you'd probably end up with one piece that was worth hearing. I don't know. So that would be my first note, is that Tchaikovsky was great, but so what? I don't know. I'm glad I heard it. I'm glad I heard that performance, but um, yeah, so what? So that's my first point. Uh, also related to the program, then I I feel like whoever plans programs for symphonies often pad the program in a way that drives me drives me bonkers. Uh, that did not happen yesterday. The first half was the Mozart Jupiter Symphony, which was that 25, 30 minutes? It's a longer symphony for Mozart. And that was it. It's great. It's a little bit short for a first for a first half. I think the temptation in previous years or in other orchestras would have been to put some five, ten-minute piece of shit before Mo before the Mozart, just so you had a 45-minute first half. So congratulations for not doing that. Second half, Tchaikovsky, then Ravel. I saw that coming in. I thought, yeah, they got it backwards. You've got this great soloist coming in, this big piece. She's going to kill it. The audience is going to love her, standing ovation, encore. And then it's like, okay, sit back down. we got another piece of music. Uh, it turned out to work great after the Tchaikovsky, the Ravel, was a heck of a way to end a end a performance. But I could have seen it the other way, right? The R Ravel is as gorgeous, 
buildup of beauty until it becomes unsustainable and then it crashes all around. And then the solos comes out and you start the Tchaikovsky. That could have been really nice. Um, it worked fine the way they did it. I also feel like it, that could have been the whole concert, just those two pieces. But I tend to think that a concert should be an hour. If you have an intermission, it's probably because it's too long and there's too much music. I know that, that back in the day, Beethoven's day, the concerts were four hours, five hours, whatever. I don't like it. Um, if I could come and go as I wanted and get coffee or cookies or something, that would be different. But if you're going to sit there and listen and not move, um, one, two pieces, an hour total, it's all you need. I would pay extra to have a performance that I went to that was just the piece I wanted to hear. I know that that almost, usually that's the big piece on the program, but not, not always. But most of the time it is. And they should just say, hey, we know you're all here to hear Mahler. Oh God, when they have a Mahler symphony and they feel like they have to put a fucking Haydn overture beforehand, it's not worth it. It's too much. So, um, good Tchaikovsky. Did I need to see, did we need to hear it? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Is it a social good? No. It's not a social bad, but maybe it is. A lot of resources. You buy a lot of synthesizers for the amount of money that went into the weekend's performances of that Tchaikovsky. Okay, now important thing. I don't know who did the marketing at the symphony for this one, but each of the refreshment stands, the bars, uh, sold what they called the Ravel cocktail. I don't, uh, I don't know what you're imagining. You're probably imagining something like what they what they served up, and so don't take this personally. But what they served up with shit. I didn't drink it. I'm not. I'm not drinking right now. Uh, but it just showed a total misunderstanding of Ravel. Ravel is like... So here's what a friend of mine... How a friend of mine described Ravel. Um, at the piano, it's like playing on razor blades behind a pane of glass. Absolutely beautiful, crystalline, gorgeous harmonies. Harmonies like out of this world. But... A little bit of pain, a little bit of, you know, right? So the Ravel cocktail they served was Chardonnay, raspberry puree, and soda water. I mean, I look, it sounds delicious. I, you know, I don't drink that. Um... Kind of like a weird mimosa type beverage. I don't know. And I'm assuming the puree was just a touch, that it wasn't like a slurpy of puree. But it got me thinking, what would my cocktail be? Right? That really captured Ravel. They're treating Ravel like he's a pink, puffy waltz, waltz, you know, like the Strauss waltzes not what this piece is about not what Ravel is about so here, here's what I thought you get a, um, a highball tumbler and fill it with ice then take two shots of gin yeah Just swirl it around a bit to get nice and cold then a shot of elderflower liquor the Saint Germain which is that on its own, even just a little splash of that will cleanse your spirit. That mixed in with the botanicals of the gin, that'd be pretty nice. And then if you want to top that up with soda water. Right, so it's a little bit of effervescence. That's all right. That would be a drink that I would have sold as the Ravel cocktail. What else? The cocktail, the Tchaikovsky, the programming... Oh, so, yeah, yeah. 
I always prefer the piano versions of Ravel's music, um, regardless of which one came first. And I think both happened. Some he wrote a piano piece and then orchestrated. In other cases, I think the the valse was con conceived orchestrally. There's a there's a solo piano version that I would love to be able to play again, technically be able to play. And then there's a version for, I can't remember if it's two pianos or if it's one piano, two pianos, you know, four hands. Um, that's a format I adore. Two piano. I Ravel, W.C. Poulenc, they were masters at that. The Poulenc two piano sonata is, um, unhesitatingly, I would call it a masterpiece. The two piano, there, he also wrote a sonata for one piano, four hands, which is awesome, but is not as weighty as the sonata for two pianos. 1950-something he wrote, so late, later in his life. Anyway, I think that's, uh, I think that's good. I'm going to go back and see there were a few places there where I stared off into space for a few minutes looking for um, looking for some of those pages. I'm not sure. Oh, hell, I'll keep them. You didn't come this far because you were looking for crisp editing. You came this far because you were uh, looking... Well, you didn't come this far looking for a review either, right? So hopefully this was entertaining and a little bit informative. Um, and the only thing I would say is go to the symphony. And enjoy and enjoy it. And with that, my dogs are saying it's time to end. So uh, keep your words about you, and I'll be back. Uh, I think my next symphony is sometime over the holidays. Opera in two weeks. Um, Pittsburgh Opera presenting um, Flying Dutchman, which is not one of my favorite Wagner pieces. I uh, I've traveled to see The Ring. I love Parsifal. I love Tristan. Tannhäuser was my first, my first Wagner love. The Flying Dutchman just never quite did it. Um, although I've never seen it live, so maybe I will be transformed or transfigured, transported. So with that.